and welcome to today's podcast, where I'm delighted to be joined by Rob Garrity, who is the founder of Presenting Virtually. Rob, welcome. Thanks, Fred. Great to be here. Great to talk to you. Yeah. So, I mean, this really is a question of it does what it says on the tin, because your company is Presenting Virtually, and I want to talk about Presenting Virtually. <laughs> and I know you do too. <laughs> um, so let, let's jump straight into what's the difference between presenting virtually and face-to-face -face, then? Well, I think, uh, come on, the, the big and obvious difference, Fred, is the fact that the people aren't in the room with you, are they? And I, think, <laughs> I knew that, Rob. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know but, but, it, but that offers a whole new ball. It makes it a whole new ball game. And, you know, I, I'm a big sports fan, Fred, you know, and, I, I, and, you know, you can say that test match cricket is the same as uh, 2020 cricket. It's the same game, but it's not the same game, is it? So... I think we're talking about that sort of difference where there's a lot of things that are familiar, yes, but there's a lot of things that have changed now that the audience isn't in the room with us. And uh, and this is where I believe and we believe that you need to up your, up your game and do things slightly differently when you're delivering virtually to what you might have done face to face. Um, and people consistently say that actually, you know, it's harder to read the room, for example, when you're virtual than it is when you're actually in the room. So um, I think there's plenty in there that's different between the two. Okay. Um, so we, we say, okay, harder to read the room is one. What other things would you say are different? What other things have changed? Mm. Well, I guess, I guess I think the, the, the tactics, the way that we engage an audience, for example, you know, um, consistently when I ask people who've come along to training, come along to work with us one-on-one -on -one in, in executive coaching around presenting, we say to people, well, what's the challenge? And the word that comes up time and time again is this word of engagement. Mm -hmm. How do I engage this virtual audience? And I think the big challenge is the fact that, of course, Fred, everyone's, if people are at the other end are in front of their computers, if with your presentation and with your delivery and your skills, you've not absolutely got these people hooked, well, they will go and check their email. And it's very easy to also still be here but actually be checking my email and you're none the wiser and you can still see me and maybe think that i'm engaged but i'm not really so um so this this battle for attention and for engagement i just think has really shot up even more than it ever was it's funny isn't it because you're surrounded by things which are designed to distract you in fact, you're doing you're doing the work on something which is designed to distract you from what you're actually doing. So, and, and, yeah. and of course, you know, the vast majority of people in audiences, if you give them the chance to go off and do something else, well, of course, they're going to accept that, aren't they? So but back in the day when we were all sat in the room, well, in a way it was, you know, it would have been really impolite if I have started doing stuff on my phone. And you see that and you notice it. But now audiences in a way can get away with it. And I guess, you know, therefore, if you're not delivering really well and you're not engaging that audience and you're not, your content isn't up there, then they're going to go and do that. And in, in a way, Fred, I don't blame them, you know, and there's plenty of bad presentations out there. So this is where I think we've got to, we've got to do something about it. I mean, I mean, to be fair, I'm thinking, thinking back, there's presentations I've been in the room, but I've not really been in the room. And I'm, talking, I'm not talking about when I'm delivering. <laughs> I'm talking about, you know, I've been listening to stuff and I've just checked out. My brain has gone somewhere else. I'm I'm doing something totally, totally different. So yeah, it's just yeah. you got more stuff to help you do that now. I guess. But, but, but I guess even <laughs> in, even in that case, you know, that you've described there, I think actually now we, we almost check out even further because you know, in that case, I sort of I still had to politely maybe nod a little bit, even if my mind's wandering away and I'm not really engaging with it. You know, whereas now we can literally go off and do some of work, you know, yeah. and you know, just be here, you know, and maybe even if the camera's off as well then of course, you know, that takes you to a place where well, I can do anything. I could be dancing around the room here with the camera off. And, you know, it says according to teams that I'm here, but I'm not really, am I? So, so we've, got to, we've got to really work with this and, and, and pull our audiences in a lot more, I believe. I just, just before we go into how we can do that, because I know that's really what people want to take from this. You actually said something interesting there, which is you said you don't blame them. Can you just expand on that a little bit? Well, come on, Fred, you've been there. Come on, how many times have you sat in a presentation, you know, and you're just like, oh, do I need to know this? This is boring. This is dull. And I just think in general, you know, before we refocus as presenting virtually, you know, I've spent the last 15 years of my career helping people to deliver big, important presentations. And I just know that what most people see as a presentation, 
I think the general standard is pretty poor. You know, I'd, I'd give the average business presentation two out of 10, three out of 10, something like that. And I don't know, maybe Fred, I'm being really harsh here, but, but, you know, it's rare that people come away and go, wow, that was an amazing presentation. I love that presentation. Please can you give me some more? It's mostly the opposite of that. So, you know, I think the bar is pretty low. And then what's happened, especially over the last two years, is lots of people have then gone virtual with these things. And they've taken what they were doing face to face and they've just put it virtual. And I still think that doesn't work. You know, it probably makes it even worse as well. So. So, OK, um, so you said the biggest challenge is engagement. Are there any other? I mean, that is a biggie. I mean, it really is. Are there any other challenges or things we just need to be a bit aware of? As I say, people always say about this idea about how do I read the room? They really struggle yeah. with this about how do I read the room? Um, and then I think there's a lot of people with just the technology of just, you know, you know, they, they don't really embrace the technology and they just do the minimum that they could do, which was, you know, join the team's meeting, hit share screen and we can share some slides. And that's what a presentation is, isn't it? And again, <laughs> you know, one of the things that we talk about is about embracing the technology. I just think there's so much more now that you can do because you could involve some polling. You could, um, you know, that. There's lots that you can do. There's some great streaming software out there where you can, you know, you can bring your logo up on the screen and things like that. Whereas most people are just thinking, well, presentation means I share the slides, I talk at the audience for 20 minutes, and then maybe say any questions. And that's maybe. it, you know, <laughs> which is almost like that old school sort of lecture thing that you might have experienced when you're at university. We're very one way. In a way, I almost wonder whether presentations are dead these days because we need to be having conversations not presentations you know um so what we're certainly working with our clients to do is to try and encourage them to move to a more conversational style of presenting um which isn't just talking from me to you i think it's it's about creating this conversation and dialogue i mean i like that anyway and i'm kind of listening to it i'm kind of listening with two heads at the moment just as presentations in general and of course sales focus and it just makes a lot more sense to have a more conversational style presentation um from a sales point of view anyway yeah. um but you think okay. about the, the success of podcasts uh, fred and, it, and it's actually because it, it's conversation isn't it and it's you and me having this conversation and me saying something that sparks something in you that brings something back and i think if i stood here for 20 minutes and talked at the audience it just wouldn't be as engaging would it and again, in, in that sales situation, well, what's the point of me just blurbing on, giving you more, 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 when actually, if I just get you involved and get you saying what you think about what I've said, well, and that could be, an, you know, that could be you think you're objecting against it. Well, I can deal with it, can't I? Right. Whereas if I just keep presenting and broadcasting, that's the word I hate, broadcasting at the audience. So I think we need to move away from that into a far more conversational style of presenting which which is two-way basically between presenter and audience love it so what what do we need to do then let's let's have some let's have some top tips if you'd be so <laughs> so kind yeah so so in terms of tips you know the way that we put it together is we've put together what we call uh micro skills and i guess the reason why i call them micro skills friends because lots of these skills they're they're changes to how you do things but they're not radical big changes um, you know, some of the micro skills, I can explain them in less than a minute and people can digest them. Then you've got to be able to practice and do them. So let me let me just pick on one as a good example. Um, and it's all about where we look. And of course, what we're used to doing uh, when we're presenting is we're used to looking at the people in the audience. And the danger of what we do when we're on Teams or Zoom or WebEx is that we look at the audience. Now, this, this doesn't work particularly well on audio, but now, Fred, I'm looking at you on the screen. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> now, probably what you're seeing is you're probably seeing more of my forehead here. It Whereas, looks like you're doing an email, Rob. <laughs> okay. Right. It looks like I've got my head down and I'm doing an email. But actually, I was looking at you on the screen. Yeah. And since I was four years old, I was told that if I want to be respectful and want to give someone some, you know, show them some respect, I should look them in the eye. But now I need to forget that advice that I've spent the last 40 years doing. And what I now need to do is look down the camera. So this is a really good example of a micro skill, one tiny change to make. But it sounds so simple, but actually you've got to practice and get used to it so that you can really do this. 
But then this is where, Fred, I think there's, there's benefits to this as well. So what do I mean by that? Well, you imagine, again, we're back in the room. I've got 20 people in my audience. I look over there to the left and I look uh, at John on the front row. I look over there to the right. I look at Mary on the front row. Now, I can only look at one person at a time. But the amazing thing about this look down the camera micro skill is that if I do that, everybody that's in the audience feels as though I'm talking to them directly. Yeah. And, and consistently, we've done this loads of times before where I'll be on a session and I'll have 20, 30, 40, however many people. And I'll say, who feels right now that I'm talking directly to you? Ask, I ask them to put their hand up. And what you see is 100 people put their hands up. So it's almost like this is where virtual is better mm -hmm. than face to face, because if I do look down the camera, I'm effectively looking at 20 people in the eye all at once, which is not possible to do when we're face to face. So you get really great. I call it great value for money by doing this thing of looking down the camera. Um, but people don't do it because what we do is we look at the screen or we look at our document or we look at the slides. And then you end up seeing, I don't know, my left side or my right side, something like that. No. So this is the uh, idea of look down the camera. Are there, are there any other areas where we'd say that virtual is better? I mean, we'll come back to the micro skills, but you know, that's quite a bold statement to go, in this instance, virtual is better than face-to-face. -face. Yeah. So there's any other things? So one of the other things that I love for virtual that I think makes it better is how you can do what I call use the... Oh, someone's ringing me. Uh, you can do what I call the pop-in person. Oh, I mean by the pop-in <laughs> person. So, I don't know. Let's say, Fred, you're the you're the managing director of the company that I work for, and I'm going to go and deliver this pitch. And uh, you know, I've got to drive down to um, I've got to drive to Watford to go and do this presentation. Now, I know that if I said to you, Fred, will you jump in the car and come down to the pitch with me? You know, how, how long did you drive for Watford for you, do you reckon? Me, it's a good couple of hours. Okay, so a couple of hours, come down, be there for an hour. Just like, look, I just, you, you can't afford to give up the, as the managing director, you can't afford to give up the time to do that. Now we've gone virtual. So we're going to do this presentation virtually. I say, hey Fred, I'm doing that pitch next week to that big retailer. Any chance you could pop in for 10 minutes? And you could come in and you could come in and go, Hey guys, we really value your business, blah, blah, blah. I'm the managing director. So you could come and add some value and it may well take you only 10 minutes. So all of a sudden, virtual has opened up the possibility that you could come and you could come and deliver part of that. And that's what I mean when I say the popping person. Does that make sense, Fred, what I'm saying? Yeah, no, no I like the idea of the popping person. Yeah. yeah. Um, no, I mean, I, I think there's other things. I mean, you talked about having 100 people in the front row. You get feedback from 100 people instantaneously. I mean, assuming they are engaged and they want to play the game. But with a, can you just pop in chat? And yeah, suddenly lots of things come up, which you can then respond to. And then even though you might be saying the same sort of thing, or you're planning to say something, you're directing it to the things which people have fed you back, which you would have a reasonable guess what they're going to say. Yeah, yeah. So again, absolutely. people, to make it conversational, you're, you're conversing with 100 people at once. Absolutely. And, and it's very, very possible. So again, that situation, 100 people there, a technique that we use and we teach people, one of the micro skills, is the idea of uh, three words, question, comment, or move on. And what I say to people, because you, know, you know that situation, you, you've seen it online, virtual, in, in, in uh, presentations, in workshops, somebody goes, anybody got a question? And it goes totally silent. And you're sort of waiting and, and the presenter then goes, uh any anyone any questions out there and you and as a presenter you're almost thinking well are they waiting are they thinking are they typing away what should i do should i stay should i go so rather than that here's the technique that we teach people and works really really well i'd like everyone to go to the chat right now and write one of three words in there question comment or move on so if you've got a question just write in the word question if you've got a comment just write in comment if you want to move on just write move on everybody go there now and write one of those three words, question, comment, or move on. Now, what happens is, bang, you get inundated with loads of things on the chat. And if loads of people are saying, comment, uh, move on, move on, move on, move on, great. You know, your audience has now voted that they want to move on. But what you will find is that you will have three people have got questions, two people have got comments, and then you can make a decision about where to go. 
So again, come back to that whole idea. Again, I, I see a lot of presenters say, oh, if you've got a question, pop it into the chat. But actually, it takes quite a while to write what the actual question is. So again, you can even shorten question, comment, move on to Q, C or N. And, and if you're just asking them to write one letter in there, it's a lot faster to do it. And then you can say, oh, right, well, I've got three people that are putting Qs. Let's go and ask Fred what your question was. Fred, over to you. What was your question? Does that, that make sense how you can use question, comment, move on in the chat? Oh, I like that. I think I've been guilty sometimes. Um, though I've also developed the skill of asking, are there any questions or what questions have you got? And then carrying on talking to give people time to put stuff in there. Yeah. Which might be a good or bad thing, you'll tell me. <laughs> yeah, but, but I think, you know, I think, I think if you really, really want questions, and again, this is what I think you've got to do virtually. You've got to drive the audience a bit more. You've got to make some of this stuff happen. Um, and again, when we were in the room face to face, we'd have looked around, we'd have got any questions and we'd have sort of sensed and we'd have seen that, you know, Mary over there on the front row, you could sense that she had something in her head. You could see that and you could look at her and you could give her that nod and that smile to encourage her to go and ask the question. Virtually, it's harder to see that. So again, this is, you know, question, comment, move on is a really good technique that helps to drive some of that to happen. I am liking these micro skills. So everyone's in the front row, pop in person. QCM, what more have you got for us? Let me talk about slides, actually, because I'm oh, actually good at slides. <laughs> Death by PowerPoint. Is it PowerPoint's fault? It's not PowerPoint's <laughs> fault, is it? You know, so you know <laughs> whose fault is it? But but what what we see time and time again, so is that people bring a set of slides with them. And maybe even before the audience have arrived, they put the slides up on the screen. And Fred, what happens with the video feed? When, when somebody shares slides, what happens with the video, Fred? Oh, are you, are you talking broadband and it starts to slow and get- Well, do you know, I don't, I don't see too much of that, but the, what the platforms do is they make the slides really big and then oh, they yeah, make okay. the video really small. Yeah. So, and then what we see is that people present with those slides on all of the time. So what I'm going to say is I want you to, um, Share your slides wisely, not all of the time. So if there's a reason for you to share a slide, bring it up, show the slide, explain the point, and then stop sharing. And then what do we come back to? Well, we come back to seeing each other, which is just sort of like we were in the room together. But the idea that people share the slides all of the time, they're always on the screen. I just think it just really, it loses that human connection. Um, so share the slides wisely means put them up when you need them, explain that bit, and then take them down as well. And again, this ties into this conversational approach. If, if we are moving towards a more conversational style of presenting, well, you know, the conversation happens between people, not necessarily with the slides on. So, you know, I can't believe how long people often leave them up there. And I'm just saying, take them down and come back to the video and come back to being able to see each other. So that's the that's the modern interpretation of use the B key, isn't it? <laughs> Which I suppose in the old days when you were saying that, <laughs> that's the piece of advice everyone thought, oh, the B key, I didn't know you could do that. It's like, yeah, absolutely. Tell me that. And, and, Not and, and, the and, only piece of advice you're taking away from this training. <laughs> no, but 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 again, you know, people were used to be wow that you could press the letter B or you could press it on the clicker, and all of a sudden the slides would go black, but then the focus was back on me. So the equivalent of that virtually is having to stop sharing the slides. And now, you know, the focus is back on us. So, um, yeah, do it, people. Don't keep sharing the slides all the time. Don't keep sharing. So get yourself back on there. It's you that people want to see. Yeah. But if you are sharing stuff and you do need the slides, another piece I heard from someone is it's more or less more. It's like use more slides. So you're keeping a lot of change going on. Rather than that slide has got everything on, or a brilliant slide. Does anyone need the whole presentation? No, make it into three, yeah. four times as many as you want. Absolutely. Do. So, and, and again, this whole idea of engagement, well, people get engaged when there's something new to see. So if you have got slides, so again, uh, the, the other micro skill, and it's quite a big topic itself, is use animation wisely. So when you are using those slides, don't just go plaf everything there's on the screen all at once. Let's let's use the animation to reveal the story. So I don't know. There's three reasons why you should buy from us. Click. Here's the first one. And I talk about it and say, but you can also sense on that slide that there's two other things to come. And I go, here's the second reason. Click. And look, something new appears on the slide and people go, oh, what's that? 
And of course, I'm not talking here about, you know, boring text and bullet points, but things that visualize what you're talking about. So um, I do think slides need to change more regularly when you're virtual compared to being uh, face to face. Yeah. Cool. So use slides wisely, use animation wisely when we're using them. Three is a good number anyway. We know that people like the power of three, don't they? <laughs> Whatever kind of presentation you're doing. Um, so let's, I could just keep talking about, about presentations in general and, and the micro skills, but I know you've got 62 of them. So <laughs> we'll save ourselves from going through them all. So we should definitely talk about um, sales proposals as well, Fred. I think there's a big opportunity there for virtual presentations. So oh, that's exactly what I want to talk about. So I wanted to move it a bit more salesy now. We've got, we've got some of the generals, mm -hmm. salesy, sales proposals in particular. Go on then, tell us. Well, I, so something that I've migrated to in the last uh, 18 months is no longer sending emails with a proposal in it. So what most people do, and I did a poll on LinkedIn about this at the weekend, I think 62% of people said that the traditional way of submitting a proposal is they write it into a document, email that document off to the client. What we do now is we jump onto Zoom and it's usually myself and someone else in the team. So there's two of us together. And in four or five minutes, we can usually create a sales proposal video where we, um, well, we recognize what the conversation was with the client. So we say, thanks for meeting last week. You know, here's what we heard that you said that you wanted. And then we then share one slide, which again, we animate so that we, we can walk through. And we walk through what our proposal is of here's what we're suggesting that we could do. And then we take that slide down. We also include the costs in there um, and then we wrap it up four or five minutes to do that and then we take that video stick it onto a web page on our website that you know isn't out there publicly available so not everybody can see it but it's then got its own url with the name of your company and then what we send you is a short email that says here's a link to go and see our video proposal and i just think this is you know this is gold dust uh, Fred, because people see these things and consistently people come back and go, wow, that looked great. That was fantastic. And there's a few reasons why I really love these because and the, the first one, I think the biggest one is oftentimes when we're talking to people inside organizations, there's someone else involved in the decision making process that you haven't met so far. And the great thing with this video thing is that they can share this video with that person as opposed to just sharing a document and what they do is they they meet me because they see me on the camera and they go oh that's rob and that's david or that's rob and that's andrea and i just think that's got to be better from a sense of connection and engagement with our business compared to just picking up oh here's another document that i might skim through look at the price and all of that business so i think the sales video proposal is a really really interesting thing that I don't know. I just don't see many people out there doing it. In the survey on LinkedIn, I think I had 128 votes. Two people said that they'd ever used one. Yeah, that that would feel about right. Um, and, and, and yeah, the psychology behind this is that people see you, they hear you, they feel as though they've met you, and they're showing you to other people. And again, you don't have to travel to do this. No. Now, I've spoken to people about this, and I know that Salespeople will push back on this and go, nah, my customers wouldn't watch that. <laughs> What's your response to that? I've got a response to this. I'm interested in what you would say to that. Well, so if that's absolutely, absolutely true, don't, don't force them to do something that they, they don't want to do. But I've just tried this with customers of ours. And, you know, I don't know, I've probably done 30 in the last 12 months or something. And what's consistently come, and now I'm not saying every time we've won the work, but what, what people come back and say is, wow, I really like this approach. Um, so, and that, you know, that's across industry. We've done that in pharma, I've done that in logistics, I've done that in technology companies. Um, so, um, you know, I'd just say, give it a go, try it out. Um, yes, I mean, that's pretty much that. You're, so you're making a judgment. I'm not saying I know your customers better, but you're making a judgment on something you haven't tried. You don't know. And how curious are we as a species? You know, you're seeing something a little bit different. It's the same as sending a video message to somebody. You know, 
you can't help but click it. You want to but see yeah. what that's all about. So again, you're still getting first move advantage, I think. Uh, I just think you, you you can be ahead of the game. No one else is doing this at the moment. Again, when you put the email together, so the other thing that works really nicely is to put a little GIF file. So you know what a GIF is, is that, that, yeah. that moving image. You can put a play button on top of it so it looks like this video is embedded in there. The other thing I often say to people is, you know, watch this 93 second video. Watch this you know, four minute video. So I always tell them how long it is. Um, and, and, and I'm making that the call to action. Again, if that GIF file is in there, then they can see it. And as you say, it's almost, it's really hard to just ignore it and say, look, I've recorded this for you. Um, and then obviously the skills are back to the skills that we were talking about before. Of how can you be engaging on video? How can you make sure you look down the camera? But the opportunities, Fred, to personalize this are immense, you know? So you can you know, talk about the kids and you can talk about the football and mention all of that. So you can bring a bit of personality in here that you just wouldn't put into a document, would you? You wouldn't put in your proposal document, you know, oh, and hope Liverpool get beat on Saturday. You wouldn't put that in there, but you could throw that in there into your video message at the end of your video message. Um, You know, it's just a trite example. Well, the other reason why I think it works so well is that, you know, as a salesperson, you were always waiting for this opportunity. You could go back to the company. They pulled everybody in that needs to be in that decision. Well, that they think anyway, and that you do this big boardroom type presentation for them. But again, I think, are we going to be seeing this stuff still? You're doing the equivalent of that. Every single person can see you in the comfort of their own home. You know, when they want to, they can watch it again if it was good. They can then go and show someone else that you also, didn't know about. <laughs> yeah, when they want to, Fred. You know, that's the key thing. And, you know, you think about how workforces now are so much more distributed. And what is the chance that you're going to be able to go and visit on the one day when the whole of the decision makers are all in the office at the same time? It's just not going to happen. And, and as organisations move to hybrid policies where they're saying, well, you know, everybody can work from home from three days a week, it's not going to coincide that everyone's in the, in the office on the same day. So, but this is your chance to do this and no one else is doing it. So, you know, I'm just encouraging people to go out there and try it and give it a go. And, and also, you know, maybe you do pick and choose your customers who you do it with Fred. So maybe, I don't know, if you, if you know that you've got customers that might be more open to it. Um, but the other place you can use it, not just for like this, us, you know, I was talking there about the sales proposal. It's just the connecting with people and chatting. And, you know, I, I started doing it on LinkedIn and I just, Pick up, and again, it saves time, Fred, as well, because how long does it take to craft a document or an email and get it word for word right and check the spelling? Whereas I just hit record and four or five minutes later, I've got what I wanted to come across to come across. Um, and I guess so one of our principles at presenting virtually, we've got six mindset principles. And one of them is it's about connection, not perfection. So again, what I'm not trying to do is re-record this video and re-record it and get it word perfect. I'm just trying to get it out and be human. And if I make a mistake and, you know, something happens, the cat walks across the screen, well, you know, you've discovered that I'm a cat lover and you're a cat lover as well. But that's human connection and brings us together. Yeah. No, I agree with that. Um, and, 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 look, and there is software. There, there's, 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 there's things you can use. There's Vigil, Bomb on those kind of things which will are designed for that and will help you do it but yeah zoom get yourself on that record yourself on your phone i mean that piece of kit in your pocket so powerful yeah edit, well, it, TikTok, place... edit it in there's just so many ways you can do it yeah before before doing video messages i used to do a lot of audio messages on linkedin so again i just pick up my phone i just talk and you know it's a 60 second limit so but again that's actually quite good because it forces you to be succinct get to the point and you can, you know, you can really connect with people. And the number of people who I've connected with on LinkedIn and on other platforms, I've never actually met them. But, you know, it is possible to build relationships and build connections with people who you've never met apart from online. And, you know, and I think, you know, salespeople that are out there saying, oh, well, I can't wait to just get back to go and see them in person. Great. But I also think this is going to be here for a long time to come. This is the future now. Yeah, oh, they're, they're missing a huge trick. And going back to that thing we said that my customers wouldn't watch that if I send them. I mean, the facetious in me says, well, you need to be doing a better job earlier on in the sales process then. If, if they don't think that what you're going to be sending them is interesting enough to look at, 
<laughs> that's a different problem. Yeah. That's not a tech thing. It's not. And, tech. And, and, and again, it also then comes down to what you put in that video. And if I start off really dull and boring, well, you know, I'm not surprised if people stop watching it. But you know, how do you open that video in a way that really engages them right from the start? Um, but again, as you said, if you've been through the sales process and you've understood what they want and you've got some good stuff, well, you know, it can totally work. So, uh, so many things we can do to engage people. Um, mm -hmm. We're trying to read the room, and a lot more of it is by asking, isn't it? It's all you're basically saying is, you know, QCM or just check it out or put something in chat or, or do whatever. That, that's what we have to do. I mean, ultimately, you can see people on screen. There's yeah. another argument that says you can see 25 people at once. You can't see 25 people in an audience at once, or thought, around a boardroom. No. But actually, you can see more people. And if you get your camera in the right way, you can look at the man and the camera at the same time. <laughs> yeah. um, any more tech stuff that's worth us knowing about, would you say? Well, actually, before the, before the tech stuff, I'm just going to go back to, um, if, you've got, if you're presented to 25 people, I'd say don't do it alone. That's the other thing. So one of the things I massively believe in is co-delivery. So if you're going to do this and you're going to look down the camera and you've got some slides that you are going to use at certain points, and you're going to have a conversation. There's actually quite a lot going on, because if you're going to get them to use the chat as well, there's a lot going on. So I guess one of my beliefs is is about co-delivering. And when I often mention this to people, they go, oh, yeah, we're, we're, we're planning to co-deliver. I'm doing section one and Fred's doing section two. <laughs> and I'm like, that's not co-delivery. That's just <laughs> two of you doing different sections. So what do I mean is that, yes, I'm, you know, I'm now doing the delivery. But Fred, you're now the wingman. You're now the, the co-host. And you've got some really important jobs to do. You know, you are going to jump in on purpose to create a different dynamic. You're also going to bring the audience in. You're also going to watch the audience, because if I am, you know, looking down the camera, it's not possible for you to also be looking at the screen and seeing all these reactions. Um, so I think two people working together really, really works well. And, you know, and again, in a sales situation, you know, I don't see any reason why the you know, sales manager couldn't be involved. The sales director isn't involved. And again, I come back to that benefit of virtual is that you can do this now was that that sales director was never going to get in the car and come to every single presentation that you did but they could get involved with the bigger ones now couldn't they because you know you can do that virtually it requires less time less travel i thinking aloud a little bit now then what you're saying there is one of the challenges for salespeople that they might not feel as valuable in that oh it used to be me going off on my own sit in the car for a couple of hours, going and do my thing, coming back, hero, I've won the business. And now we're saying, actually, you need more people involved. You're getting people to pop in. You're doing different things. There's more of a team effort in this. They yeah. might not feel as, I don't know, one well, that's just occurred to me. Again, it's a, it's a good question to ask people. But I think, look, you know, what's the fundamental in sales? Do, you know, do, do we close the business? Do we get the business? And, you know, I don't mind who, who does that. And if we can do it together, then, you know, I think that, that totally works. So, um you know, bringing everybody in and I, I personally see it as a team effort so um but look you know I still think there's a huge role for the sale person in there because they're the person that you know probably needs to brief their team beforehand and, and decide what you want people to do and all of that so um but I think some great roles that people could take there which would really make a difference yeah and, and I mean I see the way sales is going anyway is that the good sales person will be coordinating all that anyway and yeah. ultimately they're kind of there, the orchestra conductor and all these people are coming in doing the different things as and when at their kind of baton, um, their baton shift, if you like. So and again, back in the day, you would have loved for your managing director to come in the room and to show you the support of the customer if that were possible. But you never asked them because you knew that they lived two yeah. hours away. And, you know, whereas now it all of a sudden is, you know, or maybe, Fred, that is a little pre-recorded video from them. You know, so again, I don't think people are thinking enough about pre-recorded video. Um, so could you get the managing director to do this pre-recorded video and share it via email, whatever it might be, beforehand? Um, there's loads of possibilities, loads of options. Get your MD to open your presentation for you. <laughs> to be your warm-up artist. There to be your warm-up artist, yeah. <laughs> um, um, but with a distinct message to the customer that you know, this is how seriously we're taking this, that yeah. the guy's still taking his time to do it. They're still bothered about looking down the camera, delivering, 
saying the right things that are part and parcel of the bigger thing that we're we're presenting to you. But but maybe that pop in person isn't a uh, the managing director. Maybe it's another customer. Maybe it's a reference customer who's going to pop in for five minutes and just say, you know, what benefit you've you, they've had from the service that you're offering. So again, you know, don't just think pop in as the internal person. It could be that external person. Again, we've done lots of uh, work recently with universities uh, who are selling, um, you know, universities in the UK that are selling their university to overseas students. And if you're presenting in Nigeria, well, here's a great person to have pop in is the Nigerian student who's currently at your institution, currently living and experiencing what it's like to be studying in Sunderland, wherever it might be. So, um, but again, the requirement for them to come along isn't, can you give up three hours? It's literally, can you pop in for 10 minutes at this time? And then we'll just get you to do a bit and, and off you go. Yeah. It's thinking differently, isn't it? I think it comes down to that. Is that, as you said, there's lots of similarities. So don't don't throw the baby out with the bath of water in some of the old skills. Think how they do translate. Some don't. So you need to just get your head around doing something slightly differently, which can then be better if you get that right. Maybe you're getting better feedback. You're kind of having a longer lasting impression if you're doing that um, asynchronous stuff, if you're sending things as well. Of course, you can video the stuff that you're doing live and then send that or send a highlights package. Another another way of doing it. Yeah, and I, and I um, much prefer the highlights package because, again, you know, you think about, you know, recording of meetings and people say this all the time. We often run training sessions for 90 minutes, two hours. And they say, can we record it? I'm like, yeah, we can record it. Why do you want to record it? Oh, well, Mary, who's based in Australia, won't be able to attend. OK, does Mary really want to sit through two hours watch back of this? They're like, yeah, yeah, Mary's dead keen. OK. And then usually the thing that people go for is, like, I, you know, and again, I, I find this thread myself when I watch sport. If I, if I record live sports, record the rugby, for example, <laughs> and I sit there and I know it's recorded and there's an injury. And I'm thinking, I don't need to sit here and watch this. So I press fast forward. Yeah. And really what I want is I want to see the tries. I want to see the action moments, the sending off. So why this is why we watch match of the day. You know, the football program is because we just want to see the edited highlights, the best bits. So again, rather than record your meeting or record your presentation, why not at the end of it, create the summary video? And the summary video might enable me to go, look, you missed the session, but here you go, in 10 minutes, in five minutes, here's the main points that we covered. Bang, you've got everything that you need. They're far more likely to watch that than watching the whole thing back. Um, and especially when the whole thing back involved, you know, a breakout room and, you know, some side conversation about, you know, what's happening at Christmas. Well, you know, we don't want to watch that stuff back. So so I love at the end of a, of a session, we often, again, jump on camera very quickly, record something which is summarising what we've said. And again, get that sent across. Brilliant. Lots of food for thought for us here. Any other key things that I have not asked you about i should have done or that you want to share that you think will make a, a big difference because you've given us loads actually already yeah i think it's all good stuff so and as you say it's just asking people to don't throw the baby out the back with the bath water you know your fundamental core skills haven't changed but there are some things that have got to adapt and people are just not thinking about this but what i'm seeing and what i've seen especially so in the last two years is people took what they were doing face to face and yes they took it online but it wasn't great when they were face to face and then it's even worse online and you've got to adapt those things uh, to really, really make it work. But, you know, come back to that question. What if the virtual experience could be better? You know, and if we can really make that happen, that is a really interesting place for salespeople to be. It, it, oh, huge, huge chance to differentiate. Huge chance to get this stuff right. Create yourself a name for being excellent at this stuff it's hopefully what you would be trying to do in real life or any in, in any other part of the sale so um no oh, brilliant how do people get in touch with you because i know um 
well, I'm hoping that there'll be people who are picking up on this and thinking, oh, I want a bit more of this, because we only covered a couple of those 62 micro skills. <laughs> yeah, so I, I just recommend people get in touch on LinkedIn. So come and find me, Rob Geraghty, on LinkedIn. Presenting Virtual is our uh, company page. Um, either of those two places on LinkedIn. You won't find me on TikTok. You won't find me on Instagram. <laughs> None of those other things. So, um, so yeah, just connect on LinkedIn, as I would say, is the best way forward. Yet, Rob, yet. <laughs> ever you're selling me here. um no and and what i would say is definitely do connect with you on linkedin mention that you've um heard you speaking on this this podcast um no and do because i know you, you share loads of stuff really really generous on that always some good discussion around what you're putting on so, yeah absolutely love a good conversation about it but uh, the big opportunity get the get these sales videos happening on on uh, online i think these are really it's huge opportunity it is brilliant thank you so much for coming and coming sharing i will get this online um onto youtube as well as onto the uh the normal podcast channels and uh yeah i really do appreciate you uh you giving up a bit, bit, bit of your time to share this you're welcome Fred. thank you thanks for having me